Okay, so I'm going to put in the guidelines. So I'm going to go over and mark my one inch here. Okay, and I'm using these fat felt pens so you can see what I'm doing. When you guys do this on your nice little sharp pencils, you'll get a really concise, clear line. It is tricky to write on fabric with a pencil and stuff. So you might need a hard surface. The cork probably won't work too well. All right. Okay, now I'm going to mark this grain as well. And I'm just gonna go up an inch. And you have a little bit of a fringe there because I've ripped it, so I just go to, to where the fabric weave starts. All right. Okay, so here's my fabric ready to go. And I've got it marked to do this side of the neck. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take it along this line and I'm going to fold it and I'm going to finger press it or if you want to rub it on the desk or something, but I need that to kind of stay under, okay? And then the next thing I'm going to do is, let me just, I'll show you what this looks like before I start to do some cuts. Okay, so here I am at center back, all right? I've lined this corner up, center back. So I've got my lengthwise and my crosswise here. I'm going to take my pen and go right in the corner. Okay, now, if I want this to come out, then I'll pin it that way, the way I'm going. If I want this to stay in, then I'm going to go down a little ways and then go pin it the opposite direction. Okay, and this is a little tricky. These dress forms, because they are new, it's a little harder to get your pins in. But there. Okay, so I've got my pin in. Hey. It's, well, okay, just went down. Um, anyway, see, I've kind of sunk the pin right there. Okay? All right. So then, in making this standing collar, look, when I go around the neck, look what happens. Let me try and put this back together a little bit. So you can see better. See what happens? That looks very tricky and not working very well. So we have to do some clipping, all right? So when you clip, there's a couple of things to remember. Number one, I'm going to put her down with the clip. When you're clipping, you cannot clip through your seam line. What happens if I clip through my seam line? Well, I can't glue it back together. I can't tape it back together like a paper pattern. I have to start over. You can't really staple fabric too well. So don't clip through your seam, all right? And just be very careful. Use I like to use the tip of my scissors, so instead of going like this, use the tip to stop. So about every inch or so, I'm just going to go ahead and clip into my seam line, to my seam line, okay? And I'm going to go a little ways here because I know I'm going to need it for a while, okay? And then I'm going to start moving this in. So let me pull it up a little bit. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I can feel this seam through with my hands and so when I line this up, I can feel it. All right, so I'm just going to uh, pin that down. Oh, I've got pins right here. I'm going to pin it down at my shoulder, okay? And I'm going this way, so usually a pin behind you, all right, from where the, the way I've come. So I'm just going to pin that in, and I'm going to bring it all the way around the neck. Okay, I need a few more clips. Now, don't cut your dress form. Now that I've said that, I didn't. So, so get it to the front, and then I'm going to stick a pin in it, center front. All right. Okay, and this one. Okay, so I've got that done so far. So that looks pretty good. Okay, now I have a choice here. First of all, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to pin that up, and I'm going to do mine at about an inch and a quarter. That's about as high as you can go before you start running into problems. Okay, so I'm going to pin that there, all right. 
So I've got that where I want my center back right along the center back of the dress form. Okay? And then I'm going to come over here. Now, if I move this in, I get a little bit more shape, of, of like the shape of the neck. All right? Okay, see? Now, what if I were to keep this straight up? If this were to go straight up, if I kept that, then you see how it would start to kind of come out like that? See how that com comes out? Can you see that? <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of smooth that out a little bit here. And then I am going to mark, I'm going to measure along that. And see, I can see my, I can feel the center front. So I'm marking that. <clears throat> and then I'm going to stick a pin right there. Okay. Okay, let me measure that again. Make sure I got that. Yeah. Okay, so there's my pin. Okay, I'm pretty much finished. All right. So let's talk about marking. Okay. I'm going to grab a different color here. I'll grab orange. And I'm going to mark a little bit. First of all, I'm going to mark right here where I end it. Okay. And I'm just going to put a dot. Now, I have to be really careful with this on the dress form. You guys will just be marking in pencil, but you don't want to fill your line in. You want to just dot it because then you're going to come back and true it up. Okay, because sometimes when we're making a pattern out of fabric on a dress form, sometimes our lines might look a little off, so we true it up when we take it off. Okay, the next thing I'm going to mark is my shoulder seam, okay? And then I'm going to mark my center front, okay? Now right here, I'm going to mark this a little bit differently. I'm going to mark it coming down and going over, okay? So I'm doing like a little letter L. What that tells me is that the line stops at the point, but the line's going to go down right along there, and it's going to go over right along there. All right? So that's all I'm going to mark on here. And then I'm going to take it. I'm finished draping. So now I just do my necessary marking, and then I take it off, and I draw in what I need to. Okay? So now I'm going to take it off. Now I'm going to finish it up. Okay, so let me put it up here so you can see it. Okay, so there's my marks. And what I'm going to do is, because this comes straight down, I can actually just draw that in. Okay? And then this actually just comes straight across. Okay, because I, I'm making it the same width all the way along. I'm just going to make sure that when I, I'm just going to put a few dots at my inch and a quarter, and then I'm going to line that up and kind of true it up so I'm kind of in the middle of my lines and then I can draw that. Okay? So there's my collar. Now mine actually ended up being almost a right angle there. But yours may not be. Yours might be a little bit more slanted. I could have probably smoothed it along the neck a little bit more. But I just, um, I kind of smoothed it a little bit and went up. So that's like a Chinese collar. Now let's label it. This right here is the center back. Okay. This corner is center front. This is the shoulder. All right. So I'm just going to call this a Chinese collar. Okay. And I'm going to put this on the fold. And so it goes up in the front. If I wanted to turn it into a Mandarin collar, then I would curve this edge right there. <coughs> okay. And that's kind of what they did in the book. Only she actually used something on the dress form to follow that curve. But if I wanted a mandarin, I just go like this. Okay? So that's the mandarin color. Now, how many should I cut of this? First one, I'm working on a 12. How many should I cut? Two. Two. Okay. 
All right. So now let's talk about seam allowance. Okay. So in doing my seam allowance, the rule to remember is if it's a straight seam, you want a one inch seam allowance, straight lines. If it's a curved line, you want a half an inch to five eighths. So those are pretty much the rules you need to remember, except on a collar, there's one additional rule. On a collar, on the style edge, you only want a quarter of an inch. That's so that when you get it on the dress form, it doesn't get in the way and you can see more what your finished product's gonna be. All right, so unlike on our paper patterns, we didn't put in seam allowances, did we? But on this one, on drapes, you do. You put in a seam allowance so that you can see, you can put it back on the dress form and see what it looks like. Okay, so I went ahead and I drew in my quarter inch and I've already got my collar here. So now I'm gonna cut it. I've got my one inch already on these straight seams. So now I'm gonna cut it along my seam allowance that I've drawn in. These are much nicer scissors. Okay. There. Okay, here is my pattern. So you're ready, to, this is what you're gonna turn in. But you're gonna put it back on the dress form. Okay, so let's look at this. Now that we've got it finished and, and got all our lines in, we can go ahead and put it back on the dress form and I could turn it under here so you can really see what it looks like. I'm not going to turn it under the neck because that doesn't work. But and I'm going to put it there at the shoulder. Put that in. I'll just do this kind of quick to show you. Okay, and there. See now, one thing is. Um, See, when I did this one, these pins are really long, so they're kind of hard to get in. But see, I did it, well, if I want to turn the seam allowance under, then it would look like this. Okay, so if I, you don't have to do this on yours. I'm just going to show you what this looks like. If you wanted to see the finished, then see, you can turn your seam allowances under and see exactly what it's going to look like. Now, I did, I actually did pull this. I could have pulled this, I want to show you, I could have pulled this a little tighter right through here, although I can't go too much. But see, I could have, if I would have pulled it a little tighter, I would have had a little bit more of a slanted line here. Okay, and you guys can do that if you'd like. And if you want to, uh, turn this edge under, then you can get a mandarin collar. All right? So this is a standing collar, okay? And with just a basic neckline. We haven't done anything to change the neckline. Okay? So now let's go to the next one. Question? Yeah. Do you worry about ease with collars? Or no, just... no, we don't have to worry about ease with the collars. All right. Any other questions? Okay, so the next one I'm going to do, so that was a just a standing collar with a regular neckline. I'm now going to do a standing collar with a convertible neckline. Okay, and then I'm going to show you a full roll collar. Before I do that, I need to block and get a little bit of fabric. So we'll just take a little break for advertisements or anything. If anyone has something to say, they can say something here and we'll be